harvest is ripe, but the laborers are few. Why did he use that word? God goes to extreme measures to bring the loss to himself. The greatest gift you will ever give this world is your intimacy with God. The Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit are all three inside of me. I've got the power right now. I think what Jesus really wants is people to go. I want to be the answer to Jesus' prayer request. Welcome to the Fuel for the Harvest podcast. When this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world, then shall the end come. Hey everyone, and welcome to this latest episode of Fuel for the Harvest. This is Nathan. And this is Charlie. We're your host for today. And we're continuing the series, Who is Jesus? And not just who do people say that he is, but who did Jesus say he was directly from his own mouth? Right. And as we have been the last couple of weeks, we will continue in the Gospel of John, uh, where Jesus famously has seven I am statements. So far, we've talked about Jesus saying, I am the bread of life, which means he's our sustenance. And Jesus saying, I am the light of the world, which means that he is the truth. And pushes back all darkness. And uh, today we're looking at John chapter 10, verse 7. This is what Jesus said. Jesus said again to them, Truly, truly, I say to you, I am the door of the sheep. So, Jesus is the door. Yeah, kind of an interesting phrase. If you're not a shepherd, which most likely you might not be listening to this, uh, she she sheep are protected by being in stalls. And uh, in order to close the stall, they would have to have a door. Yeah. And I, that is what Jesus is referring to. I, I wonder about doors in our lives, though, too. Like, what is a door used for? Yeah. Open, close. I remember being young and my dad always saying with my loose tooth, I should probably tie a string to it and tie it to a doorknob and slam the door shut. I guess doors can be used to knock out your teeth. Um, Both directions. My brother, <laughs> my brother's had fingers almost severed off Ooh. in a door. Yeah, actually on our car door, not too long ago, um, I was... <laughs> This is a crazy, I was in the passenger seat. My wife was in the driver's seat and we got home late at night. One night it was dark out and I had like locked. I think she had the keys, but I clicked lock on the car because her hands were full or no, I had the baby. I had our baby. And I'm sorry. I can't remember this, but I had my, our baby in my arms. I pulled her out of the car and started walking up toward the house and I'd hit lock and closed my side of the door. And then I hear this just deafening shriek ah! and I'm like why I'm like trying to juggle a car seat and the baby in my arms and like what and she's like, oh, open the door my wife's screaming her finger is stuck in the door oh. but the door's locked oh no so she can't open it and so I'm literally like trying to scramble down these cement stairs like set our baby in the grass like like scrambling like oh Oh, the door's locked. Like, okay, let me find the keys. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, my God. Finally got it open. Our neighbor had run down, like, from the other house. Like, is everything okay? Like, I heard screaming. And I was like, yeah, we're okay. You know, Dara had slammed her finger in the door. Uh, thanks for checking. Um, that was not a fun instance with the door. No. Um, so <laughs> doors, then. <laughs> uh, there's all sorts of things with doors, yeah. but... Primarily, they're made to enter and to keep things out. Um, Jesus mentioned if anyone is trying to enter through a different way, they're a thief, they're a robber in this passage. So right. why would they do that? Because the door's locked. They're not meant to enter. I remember a time uh, when I was traveling and Dara was home and she had heard someone like trying to get in, trying to shake the door open. And she doesn't know why. Maybe they're drunk or whatever. But... She just felt the Lord say, don't worry, I'll protect you, and went back to sleep. What a yeah. woman of faith. I'd be grabbing a gun, like, come on in, buddy. You know, like, I'd be freaked out. She faithfully goes back to sleep. God protected her, praise the Lord. Um, but at, in that instance, the door was created to keep something out. Something out. So right. their entrances and their, their protection 
uh, mechanisms as well. Right. Um, so here's which what I think Jesus gets at here. Yeah. Here's what he's saying in verse eight: All who come before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not listen to them. And so uh, it, it's important for us to take note that there is like there's this protective nature to a door that keeps false things out and only lets true things come in yeah and jesus says hey i am the door he continues verse nine again i am the door if anyone enters by me he will be saved and will go in and out and find pasture yeah what i think there's some incredible rich truth in this passage but before we get to it i think we got to an answer the question who are these thieves and robbers that have yeah. come before Jesus? Well, scripturally speaking, there are all kinds of false teachers and false leaders who lead people astray, teaching them the traditions of man, I guess. They're teaching them their own ways. They're teaching them and leading them away from the one true truth, who is Jesus. In fact, you can read about them in the book of Acts. Acts chapter 5, uh, we read about various different people in verses, uh, let's see, 36, 36 37. and 37. For before these days, uh, Thaddeus rose up claiming to be somebody and a number of men, about 400, joined him. He was killed and all who followed him were dispersed and came to nothing. After him, Judas the Galilean rose up in the days of the census and drew some away, uh, uh, sorry, drew away some of the people after him. He too perished, and all who followed him were scattered. So these were figures that rallied up a crew, a crowd of people, almost saying, I'm your Messiah, right. I'm your Savior, follow me, let's revolt, and you will find your true freedom. And all of them met their doom. Yeah. There's another one in the book of Acts when they arrest Paul the Apostle. They're like, aren't you that one guy, that assassin that riled up the whole city? And it's interesting in the book of Acts there, uh, again, this is, they're saying, hey, are you guys like these people? And this is what it says. This guy says, no, in the present case, I tell you, keep away from these men and let them alone. For if this is, uh, for if this plan or undertaking is of man, it will fail. But if it is of God, you will not be able to overthrow them. You might even be found opposing God. And uh, so he's like, hey, let's not oppose these Jesus followers. Let's just let them be. Right. Um, but they're saying, hey, are you like these guys who were coming into a city, getting a following and saying, we're your Messiah, but then fighting against the government? That's also why people thought Jesus was going to come and revolt. Right. And actually, Jesus is saying, hey. hey, these were thieves and robbers. They caused sheep to follow them and they met their doom. But I'm going to come and you're going to find pasture. You're going to find true right. freedom. We, I, I mean, you don't have to look very far to find people who think that they're going to find hope in some kind of political messiah or leader. Um, that, in fact, there are people in our world today who think that they're that they are the messiah. <laughs> uh, North Korean, the the North Korean leader, for instance, Kim Jong Un, right? Yeah. Right now, um, there's three of them, and they all have similar names. President Kim Il Sung, and then uh, Kim uh, Kim Jong Un. Jong -un. Uh, Kim Jong-il and then Kim Jong-un. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, so long story short, uh, these guys actually present themselves as gods uh, to their people. And uh, yeah, it's really quite a fascinating thing. And they promise political freedom and truth. And they promise that they're, they are the ultimate authority and that their way is the best way. But obviously we know that that just is not the case. Yeah. Yeah. Uh they would be, according to Jesus, thieves and robbers. Right. They're taking people and pushing them ultimately to impending doom because they're not finding the true door. Right. Jesus and said, I am the door. Right. They're not the door. Right. And that's important for us. So as people who are making a choice about what door to walk through, we have to be careful that we're walking through the correct door and not the wrong door because Kim Jong-un might be a really obvious example of a false messiah, but I mean, how many people have been deceived by political leaders, even here in the United States, whether on the conservative side or the liberal side, it doesn't even matter. People are trying to find their salvation in these political leaders when there is no way that they're going to find salvation in them. Or not even political leaders. How about religious leaders or cultural oh, yeah. leaders? Like 
this is the next cultural thing this is what matters get behind it get your life on track and then everything will be right this will be true justice right. no god's kingdom will be true justice right no other justice is true justice right and no jesus is the door these movement leaders are not jesus is the door right and while we're on the subject to say it for the fifty thousandth time it's not just the guy named Jesus. It's the true biblical Jesus, the Jesus, yeah. the Jesus that's revealed to us in Scripture, not the Jesus of, of the creation of Joseph Smith via the Mormons or via the Watchtower book, uh, in the the Jehovah's Witness. It's it's not that Jesus. It's the Jesus of the Bible. Yeah. Or the Jesus of your own personal creation, for that matter. <laughs> Which you would know unless you read the Scripture to say, "Oh, I've got it wrong. I believed a few lies. I better confess those." And, and push those out. I want to discover who is this Jesus that says, I am the door. And we will be saved only by him, by Jesus Christ and Jesus alone. No other, not anything plus, only Jesus. If we find other doors, we're missing the mark. Right. If we find other windows, we're missing the mark. It's Jesus and Jesus alone. We're not gonna we're not gonna be saved by finding a back door. You know, when we were younger, sneaking out of the house. I remember I would sneak out sometimes to go TPing other people. For those of you, are like, what's that? It means toilet papering. I know that shows that I'm from the '90s. You know, growing up in 2000, like people don't do that anymore. I don't even see it in neighborhoods. Anyway, I would sometimes sneak out and leave a window or a door unlocked so I could get back in. My dad actually tells a story. Uh, that he snuck out one time when he was staying with his grandparents. Uh, they had built a cabin up in the mountains and they were staying there and there's a town nearby. So him and his friends snuck out into the town that night and left the back door unlocked so that they could sneak back in. And of course, his grandfather knew and just locked the door. <laughs> so they were locked out all night. Right. He said they slept on the pier in the town or something like that. And uh, yeah, you're not going to sneak your back way into God's kingdom. Right. There is one singular door, and that door is Jesus himself. If you don't find yourself in personal relationship with Jesus himself, you'll miss it. It's true. Just because you go to church, just because you serve at your church, just because you've done communion, because you've been baptized, because you've gone through catechism, or what? what is another name of one of the classes? Confirmation. Confirmation. Just because you've said a prayer, it doesn't mean you've made it. If you haven't discovered a personal relationship with the living Jesus, you haven't really entered the real door. It's true. Yeah, uh, it's something to be really thoughtful and considerate of. I think that's one of the reasons that Paul says that we should work out our salvation with fear and trembling. Mm -hmm. Like, you better know who it is that you're following. And if you're not following Jesus... The scriptures indicate that you're going, you're not going to find yourself in heaven one day. Like, th this is not just like, oh yeah, you know, the Christians think this is important and so it's important. Uh, you know, like this is not just some like mundane, mamby pamby, figure it out later as we go. This is very important. Uh, like, Jesus died for this truth. Like this, the the consequences of who you follow. Uh, will affect your eternity as christians we believe that you will have an eternity and either that eternity will be with god in heaven or it will be in a place of eternal suffering and torment it, it, like this is this is a important crucial i mean no wonder paul uses the words fear and trembling to work out your salvation and if you're listening and you haven't discovered this Jesus yet, I'm assuming many of you and most of you have. Praise God. It's not just a fearful thing, although there is some level of that. It's a joyful thing. Yeah. Uh, if you enter this door, not only will you be saved, but you'll go in and out and find pasture. Yeah. You're going to find your sustenance. You're going to find, man... Like your best meal. Mm, I don't mind a sheep. Like, it's some good grass, man. <laughs> not Rocky Mountain high grass, but uh, field grass. Oh, my gosh. Your and, jokes today, man. Uh, They're not good. Like, mm, 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 I love this grass. Uh, you will just, like Jesus was the bread of life, like we talked about. He's, again, inviting us to say, man, I'm going to satisfy you. You're going to enjoy this. Come to the best pasture you've ever discovered. Your freedom, your joy. These other figures who were thieves and robbers... They'll lead you to your doom. I will lead you to true freedom, to yep. true joy, 
to true purpose. Um, if you're listening in from some sort of nation all around the globe and you're feeling empty, you're feeling dry, you're feeling lack of satisfaction, I urge you, give your life to Jesus. Believe in Jesus. Follow Jesus. Tell him right now in prayer, if Jesus, you're the one true God, would you show yourself? And I, I want to follow you. And I want to discover that pasture just like the sheep when they're satisfied and filled. I want that. And you're going to discover a life that you never imagined was possible, a life of purpose and joy and satisfaction. And that's what we get when we enter the door of Jesus himself. Yeah, absolutely. Well, it's worth figuring out what door you're entering by. Uh, make sure it's Jesus. And uh, if you have questions about what that looks like, feel free to reach out to us, fuelfortheharvest at gmail.com. We would love to chat with you about it. And this also, I think, informs us as believers at the message we share with others. Yeah. Who is the Jesus we're proclaiming? And what does it mean that he's the door? Hey, they've actually got to take a step forward. They actually need to open the door and enter. And so Jesus has, has himself placed himself out there. He's died on the cross for our sins. He's risen from the dead. And now he's extended to us saying, hey, follow me and follow me. Whoever believes in me will be saved. So we offer invitations to people, but it's up to them to actually step through the door. I think we can be strategic and creative to say, hey, beg a question. Would you believe? Will you pray with me now to help them take that first step of walking through the door of Jesus himself? And other times they'll say no, but that's okay. We've told them about the door. It's their job to actually walk through it. Right. And it's also important for us to, in that same breath, ask the question, who are we pointing people to? Like, are you pointing people mm. to the local church? Are you pointing people to a political leader or a social leader? Are you pointing people even to a really good pastor? Or are you pointing people to Jesus? The, the only, ex I would encourage you to know that the only acceptable answer in that case is Jesus. Jesus is the hope of the world. Jesus yeah. is the one who brings you salvation. Uh, really good pastors love good, love pastors. They're great. Love pastors who are really good at dividing uh, the, the truth of God's word and, and, and putting it into ways that you can, that other people can really easily understand. Love, love, love them. Love the, the work of the local church and, and love the work of missionaries and all of the, but they're not Jesus. And so we should not be pointing people to them. I always find it fascinating. And, and let me just caveat that not pointing, not necessarily not pointing people to those people, but not as their ultimate. Right. We're not pointing them to because I'll point people pe to be at church right. and engage we're, their pastor. We're not pointing them to those people as their source of salvation yeah. because far too often, I believe it happens. Like instead of pointing people to Jesus, we're, we are intentionally and only pointing people towards a church or a pastor. And it's like, no, 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 no. Point people to Jesus. Yeah. And you're just as capable. If you have the Holy Spirit in you, you have just as much authority and capability of pointing someone towards Jesus as some guy who stands on a stage in front of thousands of people every week. Like, God can use you and desires you to use you to do that. So don't, don't think, well, I'm just not an expert. Like, share your story share how jesus has transformed mm. your life that when it comes right down to it i've never i've yet to talk someone logically into following jesus those who decide to follow jesus have when i share have almost exclusively followed him because of me sharing my story with them um so i i really encourage you if you like look at how Jesus has changed your life. If you know how Jesus has changed your life, you have a story to tell somebody else and that story can flip turn their life upside down. Don't neglect that truth. God can use you. I agree 100%. And I think it's it's a cop out sometimes for us to talk about a church. Oh, I like my church. I go to church. You want to come to church with me? Right. Why don't we talk about our Jesus? He's the real door. You could walk through the door of a church, but you haven't walked through the door of Christ. That's a really interesting conversation. I don't know if we have time to talk about it right now. No, but I think just that in and of itself is yeah. begs the question. I, I mean, it really is a fascinating thought. Like, what are we inviting people to? I, the number of people who say, yeah, I, I well, I keep inviting my friends to church, and I keep inviting my friends to church, and I keep inviting my friends to church. Mm -hmm. And I, like, I, I'm, I'm not against that. But at the same, with the same breath, just like what you're saying, like I'm wondering if, what should we be inviting them into a relationship Jesus. with Jesus? Invite them to Jesus. Yeah. Uh, 
if they hear you talk about church all the time, they're going to think that church is the only answer. Right. Um, let them hear you talk about Jesus all the time, and then they'll discover the church who revolves around the person of Jesus. How about this? It, it, invite, invite the people in your life to the door of your house. They'll enter the door of your house to sit at a meal table with you where you can share your story and invite them to the door of Jesus. Mm. And after they meet the door of Jesus, they're probably going to meet the doors of the church too. Right. Because really, the church is the gathering of believers who are all aiming at, we gather to scatter. We're gathering together in order to scatter and impact the world around us versus like, like it's not the source of salvation in and of itself. Yeah. Yeah. So Jesus said, I am the door of the sheep. So let's keep getting after it with Jesus as our door. Uh, remember this when you make decisions as well. Opportunities are not your door. So if God's asking you to oh, do yeah. something and it seems like a closed door or an open door, I couldn't care less. Sometimes God's asked me to knock down doors that seemed really hard, shut, closed because of the kingdom of darkness. Other times, it seemed like a door wide open and God says, I don't want you to take that door. I don't want you to take that opportunity. Jesus is our door. We need to seek him for wherever he wants us to go. And he's the only door I'm going to seek. And if he wants me to go after other doors, whether they're open or closed, I'm going after them. Yeah, awesome. Well, hey, thank you guys so much for joining this latest Fuel for the Harvest episode. Uh, we really appreciate those of, you, those of you who have liked and shared our episodes. Uh, it's a huge blessing to us. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, don't forget to unsubscribe, then resubscribe. Um, and feel free to reach out to us at any time, fuelfortheharvest at gmail.com. Hope you guys are having a great rest of your day.